welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look at uh, B-17 Flying Fortress Leader. Uh, it's a strategic bombing solitaire game from Dan Versen Games. This is the second edition. Uh, I think the first edition came out in 2017. This is the new uh, edition they came out with more recently. This is a big leader series box, as you might imagine, it's very heavy, there's a lot of cardboard in here. Um, it is a solitaire game, there's a whole bunch of cards and everything in it. As a leader game, um, there will be a lot of familiarity with some of the concepts, at least, if you've played any of these other games. So what we'll do is we'll just crack it open. We have, to start with, a kind of the semi-gloss rule book, and this is very big. This is 50 pages of rules, but with DVG, the rules take up such a small amount of the actual page space, it's not 50 pages of rules. They don't need to get overwhelmed, and they always do a ton of pictures, illustrations, and diagrams. So it's, it might seem like it's 50 pages, it is not 50 pages. Um, you'll actually get through this rule book very, very quickly. So, um, there's a lot on there, and some of the stuff is just some informational stuff at the end, just for fun. Then we have the playbook, which has sample missions, single bomber variants, mit bomber mini game. Interesting. Ooh, well, there's some very interesting stuff in here. So this is sa sample mission, how to set up a campaign, and it just walks you through pre-flight. What do you need to do? Hey, here's my bombers. Loading them up with bomb payloads, all this different stuff, how to actually get there, what certain different things mean, target resolution, how to actually drop your bombs and do it well. So there's a single bomber variant. Well, you just play one bomber. Normally you have like a bunch of cards and you're playing like a, uh, at least like a flight where you have like three or four bombers which is typically how the leader series goes. You can do it with just one, I guess, and there's a whole variant about that. Post mission, what to do. Mission encounter, bombing run. The really interesting stuff, this is what I was very interested in. There is a crossover for Down in Flames. Whenever a fighter group and or bomber group is attacked by a bandit, you can do a Down in Flames kind of mini game. I don't know if anyone's done that. It might be an interesting little setup, but they give you the cards to do it. So that would be something uh, interesting to kind of look at if that's something that you wanted to do. So it's pretty cool that they made it somewhat flexible in that way. So we have to start with this is kind of your mission board. Let me open it up. Ooh. Okay. And it's, they keep it all on one board. Some of the games, it's some of the older ones, it's kind of. Here's a bit here or there. So over here we have sequence of play. Perfect. We love that you're just going to kind of follow down, do everything that it says. A um, couple of different uh, target cards and event cards, like holding boxes, basically. Uh, weather in the Mediterranean, in the USSR theater. And then we have, so this is the, this is kind of our t t tactical display, so to speak. You're going to have your counters moving from hex to hex to get to your bomb uh, locations and targets. Different charts for bandits and things like that. And over here, uh, is this your, this might be your position escorts, when, where the bandits are coming in based on where you are maybe. And your targets and things like that. And then obviously you've got some time tracks and things for your campaign. So this looks nice. That should be very helpful for us, so we like that. And it helps that it looks decent as well. We have, typically these are campaign cards. There's a whole bunch of them. Invasion, Operation Point Blank, Transportation, Operation Crossbow, Air War Begins, so this is early war, you're probably going to get shot down a lot with no escorts. Operation Augment. Combined Bomber Ops, Oil Campaign, Short U-Boat Focus, this is a short campaign, just play one month it looks like, Strategic Targets, and another short one, Bombing the Aircraft Industry, so these are all your different campaigns and it lays out, you know, 
all your initial starting values for things like what targets are there, how, how many points you have, your victory point evaluation, hey, I got this many victory points, how well did I do? Um, how many groups you have, all your um, strategic operation points, how many you get each week, all that kind of stuff. So he's a single-sided, but there's a whole bunch of different campaigns that you can do if you so choose. And we have here leader commanders. Well, that's fairly self-explanatory. <laughs> this is a lot of spare cardboard on this one. So we're going to punch these, and this is your commander. So there's a whole bunch of those guys. And then we have, no big deal, five sheets of regular counters. So we have, these are all of your planes, and again, these are the ones that you're going to use on that uh, hex-based kind of st uh, tactical board. It looks like this is damage markers. Some uh, explosion markers is probably bombing your target. Uh, we have our enemy markers. So I, I, these are probably locations of your Luftwaffe squadrons where they can take off from. Here's your bandits, or no bandits, you'll pull these from a cup. Hey, this is what flew off from the airport that was there, or the airfield. These are different modifiers, it looks like, from drop tanks or chin turrets. And then the classic, here are our payloads. And these are double-sided with different things. You drop an M34, <laughs> it, yeah, you're going to do a whole bunch of damage rolling those. Yeah, some admin markers, a few more markers here. Oh, that's interesting. Couple of markers, couple of bomb markers here. It's just I, I know it's it's a it's a bombing game. There aren't that many um, munitions counters really. You got a few down here, a couple of lines here and here, and then on this sheet you've got one or two. Now, what in something like like Phantom Leader you've got like two full sheets of munitions because there's so many different things. Hey, you fly bombers. Is it a big bomb? Is it a slightly bigger bomb? Is it the biggest bomb, right? There's, there's slightly less variation in how you're going to load out your planes. But the thing that is going to change is you putting drop tanks on your escorts. Are you fixing chin turrets on your um, bombers? You can, like, how are you modifying them in different ways? So that's interesting. It's just slightly different there. Um, this is your player log. This is two months worth of player log, so you probably have to photocopy this a bunch of times, which is fairly typical. Uh, this is the single bomber variant that we talked about. So if you're just playing uh, one guy, this is what you would use. And this is the bomber mini game, which is just a variant. And an, an expanded sequence of play. So this is actually probably the most helpful thing out of all of that. But well, you're going to have that handy. You're just going to blow through everything. Because with a good solitaire game, it should have some structure to it. And you should be able to get it down. And a list like that was detailed. Which, this is two-sided. Got a lot of good detail in it. This is how you do it all. And this is what all the things mean when you get to some, some of the more complicated. Complicated. Usually not very complicated, but some of the more detailed um, things like bandit combat. And when you get to the bandit combat, flip it over, and it's got all the extra stuff that you need to do for that. The rest of the game is a D10, and then a whole bunch of cards here. So we should have, and we'll take a look here, a bunch of missions, and a bunch of planes. All right, let's start with this one. Let's crack this open, he says. Not being able to do it. Hmm. Usually there's a tag, and I cannot find it. Well, let's try again with a different one, maybe. Oh, we're on a struggle bus today. It's early. <laughs> Boo, he can't open any of them. All right, here we go. So this is, he says, this first one is planes. Okay, 
What is this? We have a couple of targets at the bottom here. So a couple of the targets, we've got U-boat pens in France. Let's get those in focus so we can see that. There we go. You're going to take five bombers. Is how much damage you're going to do. U-boat pens. And these ones are in Germany, as you can tell by the little flag here. Ball bearing factory. If you drop incendiaries, you know, it, it's harder to hit with those, I guess. But yeah, so th that's what the mission cards are going to look like when you're attacking them. These are some of your planes, okay? So we've got Sad Sack. And where, what are we looking at here? Usually these are have different uh, values on them. It costs 18 points. Those look fairly similar though. But they are different. 2, 1, 2, minus 1. What am I looking at here? One of these sides is upgraded, and there is a way to differentiate between the two, but I cannot see it because I'm being an idiot. I know it's... Oh, there it is. Ah, being a moron. So this is a veteran right here. Veteran 8. And this guy is an ace. So this is the best version of Sad Sack from the 488th bomb group. Um, he's really good at air-to-air, -air, even when he's shaken. He's okay at best at uh, air to ground attacks yeah that was really good so we have well Abner bomb and totem mama bomb and totem mama when she becomes an ace much better air to ground attacks slightly less good air to air than uh, that previous bomber death dealer they give him some cool names Hitler's hearse. And I wonder if these are real names. A lot of the times they actually research these and they give them real names from actual bombers. Typically that's um, the due diligence that this that DVG does, so I would expect these to probably be real ones. But there's a whole bunch of different types. So we've got B-26s, B-25s, and then we've got escorts, right? So we've got Spitz, Thunderbolts, Lightnings, we've got Mustangs, yep, Mustangs. Ooh, we haven't even have a P-80 for very, very late war. So that's very cool. But that's what your planes look like. If you've played any of the air war leader games, a lot of those values on there look very, very familiar. Things like your air-to-air -air and air-to-ground. You have a speed, which tells you when you can go, if you go first, before the bandits, things like that. Um, and the tonnage. It usually is how much you can carry. So we got B seventeen Fs, and again, each of these has and we'll kind of look. So Paradise Lost has three cards, and and they're double sided. So you can start as a recruit, or you start as green. You become a recruit, then you become average, and then you become skilled, then you become a veteran, and then you become an ace. So as you go through your campaign. You'll spend experience points and these guys will grow, they'll get better and better and better, and you'll need to as your missions get more and more difficult. We have the Memphis Bell, as you may well imagine would be in a game like this. Berlin Sleeper, Holy Joe, Hell's Angels, Grim Reaper, a whole bunch of B-17s of different formations, Jolly Roger, Hey Mabel, and then we've got some B-24s. So, a whole bunch of those. The aircraft stack's getting very, very large. Okay, look, do we have any other aircraft? We probably do, buried somewhere. So, in this one, we have more locations. And I just want to make sure... Yes. Okay. They, they are differentiated into, like, aircraft factory target. And then, he says, airfield target. Uh, ball bearing factory target so depending on what you're going for you'll have a pool of that type of mission that you're doing but as you can see it's all variations on a theme how much damage do you need to do where is it located how many bombers you can take what the incendiary value is if it's you know in a city because you start doing fire bombing campaigns 
So a lot of those. Let's see what we have in this one. Looks like we've got targets in this one, as well as some of the German defense commanders. The German defense commanders are hopefully going to give us modifiers and abilities to the kind of air defense and response forces and interceptors. Rail bridges, transport theories, marshalling yards, railroad viaduct. These are all in France, 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 France. All the same stuff. Naval port. With some German naval ports. Special weapon airfield. Ooh, testing out the secret weapons. Special weapon U-boat fa assembly factory. Okay, so those are those are all targets. The cool stuff is if we're into these. Um, German defense commanders. So we have commander Yellers. And you'll roll a dice, and this is how he responds, how many bandits, and at what range they can fly to to get there. So some of them are better than others. So Kamhuber on a 9 through 10, all out. 6 through 8, high. This guy only on a 10 is all out, and only on a 9 is it high. So this guy is much better at responding, for example. I wonder if we have 8 through 10 all out, 4 through 11 high, Commander Schmidt. He's a nasty one. You don't want to come up against that guy. But those are going to be modifiers for defense forces, which we like. There's a bunch more in here as well, it looks like. And we have Commander Knocke. Hey, he's pretty decent. Commander Stumpf. Commander Weise. Commander Graf. Commander Rodel. Schrö. Randl. Kortenkrelle. Yeah, uh, Hermann Göring. Yeah. yeah. 7 through 10, everyone's gonna get scrambled. 4 through 6, high response. That's. This is that's bad. You don't want that. You don't want to come up against Goering. You don't want to do it. Okay, and the rest. So we have. Let's see. Secondary mission cards, event cards. They do have the same. They got a different picture on them, but they do have a similar back. The coloring is the same. So you got to be careful. You don't get all these mixed up. So we have secondary campaign uh, objectives, and these are secondary mission cards. So if you mess up your first mission, or if you have bombs left over, you can try doing all this other stuff as well for more points, or as points in lieu of messing up your primary mission. Or you might have an event card that calls you to like, uh-uh, you're only doing your secondary today. And the event cards, which we've got a bunch of them here, you'll be very familiar with. Usually it's like pre-flight and during flight. Um, so you have fighter miscommunications. Fighter escort cannot meet up with bombers. Remove fighter group from the mission. That's very bad. You don't want to get involved in that. Or you designate one group as being fast for the homebound flight. So you could, if someone's damaged, you can say, he's fast. He's going to get home much quicker, you know. Or he's going to attack before the bandits, so he's got a better chance of survival if he can take them out before I do. It just helps your survivability on some of those that they can run away a bit quicker if you're in, in a pinch. But these are just events that trigger every every mission that'll just shake up your tactical situation, basically. And the last deck of cards here, it looks like is more targets. And there's a lot of targets so far. So these are German aircraft factories. Lots of targets, oil storage, oil refinery, V weapon site, marshalling yards in Belgium, railroad bridges. So, so far, <laughs> we have a stack of targets that's this big. These are all the targets. Just to give you an indication, this is how many aircraft we have. Which is fair, there's only it's not P-17s, right? But this is how many targets we have. And then we have a stack of secondary targets. 
and all that's going to be modified by what might happen with these and all the other draws and dice rolls that you're doing. So what I'm saying with that is, is this is one of those games that DVG puts out that you could play ad infinitum if you so chose, and if that was your cup of tea. There's a lot of replay in here, so you can play long campaigns, you can take the same crews and bombers through as much of the campaign as you want, and like all of these solo games, the more you put into it, the more you get out, right? Your bombers are already named for you, but the more you kind of get attached to it and visualize what's happening and get into it, the more it's going to hurt when someone gets shot down, you're like, oh, this is awful. You got to spend those really important SOs to get replacements in, and they're not may not be as good. So that's what this game offers you. It's a solitaire game. It looks decent. People like it, so I'm excited to get this one played, and we'll let you know how this one is. So appreciate you guys tuning in. As this has been B17 Flying Fortress Leader from DVG, and I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com.